Greetings. Welcome to the Wix online meeting, triage meeting. That means it's a Tuesday. Uh, this is what I call 7.5 because it came after the Wix meeting number 7. Um, as always, we're recording this for the people that can't make it uh, live. Um, I'll bring up the bugs and we'll just get right to it. Bob, you're going to be scribing wrong behind? Yep. I will. All right. Here we go. Uh, option to hide burn ARP injury. I think we have another bug that or request that says the same thing. Very likely. Yeah, it, it's just not... I read this bug the other night where they basically want Burn to ship a whole bunch of other stuff and not be a bundle, not have any identity on the machine. Um, I've been thinking about this, and you know, like, we could do this and make people happy. Um, I don't know how hard it would be because there's so much around writing the ARP entry and how much goes with that. But if you marked all packages to not be cached, then presumably we could make the bundle not get cached at the end and clean itself up and kind of like do a rollback at the end of itself. And then you'd lose all of the other benefits of bundles, but you would get the robust download and the ability to chain a bunch of stuff. Um, so I, I say we could keep it. If someone wants to do that work, I don't know that... I'm not thrilled about that scenario, but it keeps coming up, so there must be some reason that people want it. Um, it certainly isn't a good idea for MSIs, but... No, um, the, the caching is the big deal. Um, <laughs> if, if, But I suppose we let someone not cache packages, so right. not caching the bundle makes a certain amount of sense. I'm a little concerned about the... Uh, about how hard it would be to get right, given how we handle registration today. Well, I'm, uh, I'm hoping, yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm hoping we could maybe clean it up like the way rollback cleans it up. So essentially it's like add yeah. the rollback always, which would then cause the whole bundle to get to nuke itself at the end, um, which means the ARP entry would stick around for as long as the install is happening, which would be good in case it failed after restart and you had to get rid of it, which is the reason people right. always forget. But like, yes. oh, it failed, and the ARP entry is still here. I'm like, yeah, how did you expect to get rid of it? Right. Re well, re reboots in the scenario. middle. Right. So, reboots yeah. in the middle are annoying. So anyway, I, I'm not thrilled about this scenario, and it looks like Jacob's kind of like people not wanting to learn how burn works and how chain bundles work and stuff like that and I, I generally agree with him um, but if this feature wasn't horrible I guess I'd let somebody else do it it's kind of where I'm at uh, I'm concerned about taking it into 3x but that's fine I'm, I'm fine putting it in 4 4x 4x okay um, so yeah but it's just kind of like yeah if you want to do it you have to go over there and then we'd have to talk about it because there's a lot of things like you'd have to make sure that all the packages are marked cached equals no and then right. if you do that we should already have this I don't know if it's in there but does it already say that if you say cache equals no on MSI package you get a warning saying you really shouldn't do this I mean you'd it, have to do all that stuff to make sure that people knew what they were building yeah anyway yeah, if you're okay with it I'm, I'm okay with it yeah I, I, I'd be happy to I would be be willing to have someone talk about it yeah, and I'm, and I'm not against having that in 4x. Okay. If you're a product of no media, no media, who does that? But all right, with a SWID tag, you can accept. Yeah, okay, well, we should fix exceptions. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, well, we should fix that if it's a bug. No, crashes are bad. Crashes are bad. Um, I will... I'll actually, I opened it. I'll oh. give it to myself to okay. investigate. Oh, 3.8? Three eight? Three eight. Yeah, okay. I, that's up yeah. to you. I'm, you know, whatever. It, okay. It's a crash. It's extremely that's rare. True. I will just investigate to see what the fix would be. All right. If you want 3.8, that's your call. Mooks targets don't output log output name at minimal verbosity. They do in Wix 4. Ha-ha. So the question is, do you want this in 3x? It's not a hard fix. It would be a console log line. Yeah, I'm, line. I wouldn't, uh, it's not 3.8, but I would take it in 3x. Fine. Oh, well, that's cheating. You're the opener. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> yes. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, we got the, All right. So this is the, we're seeing some cases where uh, some of the customers from Fire Giant are seeing rarely, very rarely, but some, and only some built. It's, this is a very weird bug. If you have a signed 
bundle with an attached container, sometimes you can get this e-fail. Um, I already sent a bug fix or a, a change to add better error reporting out of this, hopefully. Um, we've also been seeing this, um, it turns out, on Wix 3.7, but only on the, the RTM build, of course, because that's the only one we sign and the only one we ship as an attached container. So anyway, I think dog fooding is kind of biting us a little bit here, or the lack of dog fooding the attached containers that are also signed, which of course is a pain. Um, unfortunately, we're not getting any logging information, so or we don't get detailed log information. So my hope is that we'll get this. So anyway, uh, this is probably not a 3.8 bug in the end. Um, probably 3x bug at this point because we don't have any information to move forward on it, but it is happening out there. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this in 3x. I'm yeah. wondering if maybe for 3.8 we should, um, you know, like sign the RC release as well yeah. as at that point switch to attached container mode. Yeah, we should do that because I have to hook into the outer curve signing thing. Right. Which is yeah, new. I've, They've I've, got a new system that I haven't. I don't have to go do that, and I probably should do that for the RC rather than waiting for the last build to do that, huh? Oh, they changed. They changed the three seven. Uh, yeah, they now have a process. Before it was very ad hoc, and so now okay. they have a process. I have to do the work to integrate with it. It, it looks great. I just have to do work. Okay. Um, in the build system. So, all right. Yes, we should do that. On the flip side, we may be able to get any build signed by them with their new build process or new build their new system, but we'll see. Oh, anyway, uh, so I think this is 3x, but I'm I'm with you on the getting things signed. Do you want to open a bug or a feature on that, and probably should do that? I will do that. Yes. You have to do that to me, since I'm the one with all the keys currently. Um, media versus media template compression. So I looked at this bug, and you can. Oh, he has set compression level high and embed cabinet in both scenarios. So this would say that media template compression is ignoring the compression attribute? Yeah, there's so there is a change in the compiler between 3.7 and 3.8, and I <laughs> vaguely recall making it. But <laughs> um, and it's, it's something really simple, and I don't know if it's the answer to the problem. So this um, may be fixed in 3.8. This might be fixed. I'm again. I'm willing to take this um, myself to investigate. Okay. I, I, uh, it's fixed. Yeah. We should fix it. <laughs> yeah. If it's not there, it's definitely bad. Especially I, actually, we we should probably not use MS Zip anymore because my understanding is it's not grand. But anyway. Well, high compression is is slow. Well, I don't know about the vaulting to high, but medium might be better because LZX. My understanding, I haven't done lots of numbers, is LZX tends to do better than MSZIP, and the speed of MSZIP doesn't matter or isn't as big a deal these days. Interesting. Okay. All right. Custom action project templates missing. This was just fixed, right? This is, this this is, is a dupe. dupe. All right, good. Because it wasn't done, but it's done now. Registry Gamana upgrade codes includes goods of all related bundles. That is interesting. Someone should look at that. Cause I don't actually know what this all means. Two unrelated bundles, A and B, and both related to bundle C. A will detect B as a related bundle. That does not sound right. No, that doesn't. So, yeah, that's that's tricky. We should fix that. Pre-process extension in old format. The sample code is the old format, updated or deleted. Oh, this is an old bug. All right, cool. Uh, um, should we delete it? <laughs> um, or should we maintain it? I found it interesting because it's not actually in the build. So, yeah, this only ships in source? Yeah, you'd only find it in the source code. Uh, see, this is the problem we've had over the years of stuff that just gets stuck into the source tree. And uh, well, yeah, someone just threw this in there, and they never had any. Like, I don't know where it came in, but it certainly was never designed to be used. The scenario was not finished, as far as I know. There may be some chum element, chum page that says, "Go look at this thing in the source tree." 
So either we put it in the build or we nuke it. Probably. Votes? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, I'm like, I don't kind of care. Wow, I've got such a resounding indifference out there. That's not helpful. Well, I, I, I hate to delete stuff. It just sounds, you know. Horrible, but we delete seven well, build. That was a good thing. Um, well, I I hate to delete things that might be potentially useful for learning. Uh, fair enough. Um, but I just preprocessor extensions. I'm kind of like me. All right. So we have two votes for people don't care that much. The question now is. I I, I kind of want to say preprocessor extensions are really advanced. I mean, I can't I, I'd rather have, have like examples, good examples of compiler. Although I guess we have those. We have the Wix tool set itself. We have, yeah. <laughs> um, and so this is and, an uh, true. We we don't have any any examples except for a busted one. Right. Um, I, I'm 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 going to say delete. That's my vote. All right. Can I get anybody else voting for delete just to have a second? Because I'm really I, I so much indifference in the gallery. I'm getting a nuke it. All right. John Cooper agrees. I, I think that's John. All right. There you go. Um, you want that in three eight or three X? Uh, I'll take it in three eight. All right. So it's a, entirely uh, too I'll long. I'll check the chunk. Too long to nuke that. That is part of that fix. The unit test documentation needs to be updated. I'm sure it does. Hey, John, this is yours. No, Jacob. Sorry, not John. Wait a minute. Yes, Jacob. Uh, yeah, the whole documentation needs to be rewritten at this point because I don't think we. That probably was written back in the days of. Oh, good grief, Nant. Uh, yeah, that was definitely written before the time when we were moving X unit. Um, that was probably stuff Jordan wrote. Oh yes, gosh, that name. Yeah. Um, cool. We should fix it. Um, I don't know. It's been there for a long time. So this bug is what a year old. <laughs> Sad. Um. Yeah. Well. We should we should fix this. Do you want to fix this in three X or three eight? I guess that's really what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, this is three X. All right, fine. You're not gonna hold the three eight release for it. No. I'm dead. It's been that bad. Oh, it's eleven months. It's not a year yet. Couple bugs short of a year. We'll yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jacob, I did do the work to move to a new unit test framework, and so we do need to sit down and write all that down. But I've also in the process of fixing a lot of it because we're kind of halfway in between two and it's very difficult to point at somebody and say, see, look at this beautiful block of code because it is horribly ugly right now. So, anyway. Um, currently, if a registry value does not exist, we'll undefine the variable. It should be possible to define a default value. Ooh, that is actually a pretty good idea. I like that yeah, idea. I've actually I've wanted to have this discussion uh, in Wix devs. Uh, Burn variables and searches work pretty differently uh, than MSIs. And this is the primary example, uh, or one of the big examples. Um, you know, in MSI, it's easy to add a default value and then override only if a search succeeds. With burn, uh, typical pattern is you have two variables. One is an existence check, and then the other is the value. No, you, the, the existence check shouldn't be necessary. I've seen that pattern. That pattern should not be necessary. It, it is for for strings. Uh, Version in numerics work as you'd expect. Deleting the or a, a failed search returns zero. Right. Um, or and or the comparisons work 
if a variable doesn't have a value, it's you know, evaluated to zero. So that works. But strings, not so much. Well, I, oh, you're saying if you're looking for a default value that has no value. No, if you're looking for a, say, registry value uh -huh. that doesn't exist, the variable's deleted, which is not the same as having an empty string. Oh, well, we, that sounds like a bug, too. Yeah. That might be a 4x bug, but that does sound like a bug. Right. Because that could really surprise people in 3x, but... Um, yeah. So, anyway, I think this is a good feature. Uh, this feature could be added in 3x. What you described should also be fixed, but that would be in 4x. Uh, I agree, yes. All right, all right, cool. So let's go do all of that. Do you mind opening that other bug if it's not out there already? Cause uh, I can do that. I've never thought of that scenario, and or rather I, I, I would not expect it to behave the way you described. So. Me either. The util Wix internet shortcut tests, wow, fails if the window and variable solve lowercase. Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we should fix these tests. I totally agree we should fix these tests. So, 3x? Uh, sure. Right, we should fix it. It's good to know yep. that it's broken. That area path, but yeah, we should do something there. All right. Add explicit acceptance of EULA for silent installs. Seriously, Bruce? You can do this with a property, right? So, uh, what happens if a condition evaluates to false and there's no UI? Probably. And then you'd have to do the optional thing. Um, well, if the launch condition fails, you're done, silent or, or otherwise. Right. So if the condition so fails, right, and then, yeah, this should be possible now, right? Oh, but the conditions may be evaluated before the UI is uh, shown. Well, okay. Um, oh. So it's a matter of, like, because those, those conditions, like MSI launch conditions, will show up before your UI is fully up and running. True. Um, which means you would always have to pass it from the command line. Um, uh, so, no, you could, you could condition it based off of, I think you could condition it based off of the, the uh, oh, but we might have a property for the Since UI. We don't have bundle right? UI level, do we? No. Um, okay. I, I sure. I sure. Whatever. It would be good if this was possible. And if it's not possible, it does seem like a thing we should we could enable. Um, seems like a completely reasonable thing to take in three X. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see anything in the list about uh, UI level. Yeah. So, so. I, I agree. It would be nice if this was possible. <laughs> Just for those crazy EULA, for those crazy legal departments that are. Oh, a little crazy. Well, it's I, I've seen it before with silent installs. It's a it's a real thing. Yeah. Oh, hey, look. Oh, wait. It could fall sixteen. It would be nice to indicate that it must, it must wait for other installations to complete. Yeah, you know we have this issue with. Um, well. I hate the idea of waiting because, you know, installs can well, start at any time. Well, what we do right now is we um, we retry on these scenarios. So um, you don't want to wait because testing for all the MSI scenario, like at this point in time, trying to test that MSI is, you know, in a currently in an executing state is fraught with peril. I mean, we'd, the stuff out there just had all kinds of problems. So the easiest way to test whether there's an install going is to attempt an install. Um, and we already handle the 16, 18. Um, for retry, yeah. For retry. So it's like, just retry, which you can do today. I think that's the solution. 
Well, um, the, the only downside is right now we'll retry three times and then die. Right. True. Yes, the, I remember the Visual Studio UI did something specific where it said, we've tried this, you have another install running, you want to try again or something like that. Um, they had UI that could come up in the case of failed retries, yeah. or some failed retries, which I guess you could say Wix Standard BA could have UI that says, we tried, retried on this, if the error code is this, show this error message and do something. Yeah. I, I'm not against the feature, but... I don't. I certainly don't want to be waiting on the MSI mutex and all that kind of stuff. That's just all been crazy. Yeah, I agree. And there's really no way. To... There's always a race condition anyway. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We have to handle retry. Right. So I'm just like, let's just use retry to do it. And then this is more UI. So. Uh, that's what this would be. It's more UI. Yeah. In Wix Standard BA. So wait, I say we close, um, let's see, they say burn. <laughs> I was going to say we could close this, but, or, you know, burn already supports this. Um, well, we can edit the title. There, I was edited. No, I don't like, like, the way this bug is worded, it's not the right way. I was going to add a comment that sums up what we talked about. Okay, I think that's fine, but. It could go in 3x if someone wanted to write the UI. I mean, it basically turns into a UI problem. Yep. Add absolute path and variable capability to log prefix. Absolute paths. Oh, they want a variable. It's actually, they want to root it in a variable. This would be the default location. Not only the folder location, but the file name as well. Well, you're going to get the file name, whatever name you put in there, then you're going to get our suffix on it, because we're not going to mess around with that. Uh, I, I guess we could add the ability to specify where the folder would go. The rest of that prefix. I don't like I don't like overloading prefix that way, but but all right, fine. fine. Something. Yes, fine. Folder. Log folder. Right. I guess. Seriously people. Change it. Use burn and you know where to look. Anyway. Um, C sharp manage interfaces. Be nice to have full interfaces defined. Uh, well, this is a 4x thing, if we were to do it. Mocked out for unit testing and simulation of installation. Debugging. I don't know how it would improve the ease of debugging. Not to, yeah. Well... I, it, I guess a mock. You could mock it all out. If you could mock burn, then you could yeah, do a lot. With that's the, what you'd have to do. I mean, but yeah. that's, to me, simulation of installation doesn't change debugging, though. Debugging won't change. I mean, if you're debugging the MVA inside burn, it's going to be the same. Um, I, I guess. I suppose. We could take it in 4X. Can't do it in 3. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we could look at it in 4. Now, the level of indirection didn't hurt anybody, just made everything slower. Yay, slow. Anyway, possible add detection for 4 or 5. I think we did this already. Yeah, we did. All right. Wrong binding in IIS site. Oh, that was last year. All right. Who knows? Yeah, okay, fine. Oh, sorry. We missed it. We passed the uh, the point at which we were looking at bugs that were a year old. Yes. Yay! We're now a year old. Of course, Bob thinks that's important because that means we don't have any regressions. <laughs> well, Except we have regressions maybe from 3, 6. Uh, a, a year. It's just a nice, it's a nice uh, period of time. <laughs> Yeah, until we get to the end when we see bugs that have been open for seven years or something. <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, wrong binding in IS site. Oh, without star. All unassigned is created with a star. Create an install that adds that. Mark that. Create a secure binding for that. Run install that I snap in for 
bindings are two entries, one with a star and the second one without. This behavior crashes the website. Crashes your website? That's awesome. Um, okay. Someone should fix that. Wow, this is funky formatting. I wonder how that happened. Oh, it's probably got raw HTML in it. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, someone could look at that. 3x? Sure. Because it sounds like something's wrong. Detect running install. I have a feature gracefully handled situation where a user starts the MSI and stop multiplying. The same install is kicked off more than once. Seriously? Uh, no, I don't want to do this. this. They want, I guess, the UI to be blocked. Yeah, it must be the UI. They want the yeah, install no. UI to block. No. No. Does anybody no, want this feature? Both Bob and I are way against it. Basically, it's block the MSI UI. No, no, no. All right, no. Sorry. No. Bogus warning when compiling merge modules that reference common files folder. The thing is, has a key file with path. It has a key path with that. This path is not rooted in one standard directory, so it does not meet the criteria. Right. So, it's not, this is saying it's not rooted in. I think file. this is this is saying that merge modules and star goods don't go together. Okay. Well, we should look at that. 3x? Um, yeah. And Jacob's like use a Wix slip. I right, that's fine. I, part of me is like I, part of me is like I I agree, but part of me is like we have to keep merge models around because we never know that the people that are stuck using other installation technology systems may need to use merge modules to communicate with those people, even though they are working on the Wix tool using the Wix tool set themselves. Anyway, that's the main reason I keep merge modules around, um, and we should keep it working. I mean, it should work, so it should work. Uh, yeah. Well, there's, so. there's going to be a limit as to the things that can get done in a merge module. Uh, sorry, this, we're not going to do things that merge modules can't do, but this it should oh. be able to do. Agreed, agreed. So, I mean, yeah, clearly if you can't do it, you can't do it, but yes. Hey, broken links. These are not the same because these are actually because of the casing, <laughs> which is that this bug has been fixed. So I think we can close this bug as fixed because we are now using a Windows-based uh, um, web server, and it does not care about the casing. Granted, we have a whole bunch of other bugs, but that's different. Cool. <laughs> we'll make that one go away. No reason to keep this one around, too. Agreed. Puts this assembler, 10 doesn't look at that key, see this. Oh, have we fixed this yet? No, unless this is the 64-bit bug. This might be 64-bit. It's talking about dev 10. Yeah, I know. Nope, that's not the problem. Whoa. Um, do you want to try to sneak it in 3.8 since you already made a fix in this area? Or do you just want to push it to 3x? Okay, I guess this is official. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take it in three eight at least for investigation. Sure. Um, if the doc looks, you know, official and good, and it works on Dev ten and Dev eleven and Dev twelve, okay. Right. Rock and roll, right? Otherwise, put it in three X or something. XML configs element path is actually treated as X path. Escape them as well, doing this strings formatted by MSI and the results of computing. So, oh, is that what the issue is? That they didn't escape, that they have to escape the MSI isms first? No. Oh. Um, is it that I XML config uses is... XSL pattern first? No, I think this was, yeah, I was on this one. Oh, it, <clears throat> 
So, I think... Uh, yeah. Um, I think the idea was that because in XPath you can indicate... Um, you, you can have expressions that indicate a, a uh, result in a node list or whatever the XPath terminology oh, is. You can get a list, I see. Therefore, XML config should magically work on the list as cool with multiple elements. That's cool. Yeah. Um... I don't know. There's some kind of XPath purity thing here that I think is... Sure. Um, I, we can put it in 3x. I mean, I... Oh. How do you do the... Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I, know, I can see that. See it trying to do a loop over and then do what it does to all of them. It could be done. Uh, I agree. Might be a 4x thing, though, because it'd be breaking behavior. Well, if you go look at the source forge bug, it's like, oh, you know, everything's too confusing. You should have a new thing that... Oh, oh fine. Fine. I'm, I'm not against it, if that's the way it works. So, yeah. Yes. It could be interesting. If I'm, someone could go write that feature. Currently, size is always the size of the engine XC. This is not true anymore. This has been fixed. Because <laughs> yeah. we have another bug that says it's only the size of this bundle and not including that, but sometimes it's the size of everything. And it's like, yeah. So this is not true. It's not always the Nginx. -E. It's bigger than that now. I could imagine it's that bug way back when. Right. Um, wow, we're going to get 25 bucks here. Uh, Jacob's saying he did see it that way on XP. But, well, if you hit that bug, Feel free to open it. I'm pretty sure that's gone, though. All right. Adding the secure attribute in a property fails to build merge module in 3.6 when custom action from DLL is defined. Okay, there's a l use case of merge when I have 3.5 to 3.6, but not new. Having custom actions declared as setting some properties as secure, causing an error. Really? I can set the property above as secure. Deal with the property. Package. Property one. I have no idea why that would be related. I, How yeah. would that affect either one? Uh, 3x, and someone can look at that? That. Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, an IDT is getting whacked. Wow. Yeah, okay. If that's true, that's a pretty crazy bug. No idea what's going on there, then. Wixlib should give more descriptive error when a fragment tag is m missing from a library that WXS. Really? Okay. Needs an empty, even if it's not used at all? The library... Yeah, that's w weird. The fact that the t file's auto-generated the tag is present is good, but when people migrate from older versions, it causes a problem. How did you have a library before that didn't have a fragment? Uh, you had a Wix element that was immediately closed. That was supported? Apparently. Wow. Sure doesn't work, we should give a good error message. I don't know what the error message is right now. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Wait, Wix library start element? This could actually be library processing. Okay, anyway, yeah, we should get a good message. Like, if you do this, the right thing should happen. I agree. I don't know if you error and say the fragment's empty. No, you don't say the... Because you can have an empty... Oh, oh. <laughs> That should be allowed. All right. I assume you've fixed some of these. So where am I at? 3792. 3792. 379. Oh, did 
Did you get that one already? Dang, that was fast. Right? 3791? Oh, did these bugs just come in? Earlier today, prepare for RT. Oh, that's the bug that you just gave me, I bet. All right, util burn, waiting for a detect running install, how to author. All right, this is blank. I wonder if that's true. That's quite an important topic. Some documentation should be added. I agree. We should add some documentation. The blank ones are probably all fixed. I hope so. Well, the well, blank ones tended to be blank because it was the old uh, yeah, built system. So. Yeah, the XSD transformation would throw stuff away that it didn't like as valid XML. All right, let's. Oh, uh, should we go look real quick? Hey, look, there's a page. It's still blank. Oh, no, it's not blank. It says to-do. It's not blank. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not blank. It says to-do, which is would have been very helpful to know that in the bug. It still says to-do. So, yeah, I agree. We should oh, fix that. Right, right, right. <laughs> yep. Someone should fix that. Hey, look at this. A Wix burn variable for UI level. <laughs> yeah, Andy? <laughs> How awesome is that, that we find a bug that... <laughs> <laughs> is about a oh that's awesome or a feature for a feature now. yeah that's awesome uh, I think this is reasonable <laughs> yeah. oh that's awesome look at A I feel like we've seen this before um, yeah, yeah oh. we, should, we should fix Wait. it oh no this is yeah this is in Spanish and Italian we had another duplicate A in Spanish bug somewhere. Um, so, anyway, yes, I agree. We should fix this bug. Do you want to try taking three eight, or are you going to move it? Um, I'll do my normal take it for investigation thing. Okay, it might be fixed already. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Ah, oh, voter of twenty twelve causes workflow toolbox malfunction. Yeah. Mm. Could this be another one of your not using the new MEF kind or MPF MEF, jeez. The new MPF stuff? On the brain. Yes, that's definitely the the case. Okay, you can do whatever you've done with those bugs. I don't know where you're putting them. Free X open. Oh wow. All right. I guess we'll have to go find them again later. Adding two components with identical keys and no names, item already accepted. Oh no. That's no good. It's not good. Uh, I thought I caught all those errors before we migrated them. That means they did something screwy in their text and it blew up the markdown processor. Anyway. Um yes, this can do it. Alright, good. We have an example. So yes, this can cause this error message and it's impossible to figure out what one I remember helping the guy that was trying to figure this out and Actually it's this thing, the perf tool thing in Visual Studio, and you can see all the little pieces of Visual Studio information coming out. Isn't that cool? Yep. <laughs> hey, look, there's our GUID in case everybody wants it. No, don't use that. Anyway, I'm joking. Um, so yes, that should be fixed, because that error message is brutal when it happens. Right. It's like, you get a crash and says, duplicate, you know, Adam has already been added, and you're like, what went wrong? And we have it. We just didn't give you enough information. Uh, close app should send query end and WN session. Ooh, I think it does now. Really? Yeah, I think I did that work at the beginning of the year. I'm going to bring up a note. Let's see. Look at source uh, uh, CA. Ooh, uh, where's that? Source CA. You did. I did. Sweet. I am awesome. I should get credit for that. Anyway, yes, that should be fixed in what, 3.8? I think I had 3.8. Okay. Yes, yes, I agree. Cool. Sweet. I rock. I fixed bugs I didn't even know were open. Feature requests that are already open. Command line primers need a case insensitive option. I do agree with this. This bug should be fixed. I remember this bug. Hey, we're getting the bugs that I remember now. That's awesome. Yes, we should not handle this. We should, command line primers should not be case sensitive. Oh, oh, variable names. Yes, the variable names. Um, yes. And this is correct. Only Wix standard BA. I assume that's a 3x thing. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, another one of those reflector.net and votive crashes in Visual Studio 2012. Probably another one of your MPF things, right? Yep. All right. Signed installer gives unidentified publisher errors. Oh. Sign my using MS build, then copy to local disk. Internet connection installer, I get that. Problem doesn't manifest when running installer direct from network share. Does happen. It also doesn't happen with plain MSIs. It's specific to burn. Apparently, Vista install root systems on demand. Oh yes. I remember this going back and forth. Right. Suppose the UAC does not download certificates. Yeah, because we don't force the verification of the certificates before the bundle launches. Um, Are you saying we could do that in the on the unelevated side? You know, a very large part of me wonders if, you know, it says they've got it signed correctly. I don't know that this is still a problem. I know we, we did some things around here. and The problem also is that we don't want to go trying to hit the network from things, because we've had huge problems when that is done, where we try to go verify the, the certificates already up the chain. We've, we've basically worked ourselves into a space where it's like, this is the highest success rate we can get, and the side effect is that we don't always get the freshest certificates if you don't have, or we don't force the certificates to come down if you don't have them already, kind of thing. Um, I find that kind of shocking that they just install certificates at will. It's not like an update thing. Uh, it, they do it when you query to do signature verification. You can tell when Verify Trust to go and. Um, get more certificates uh, from the internet, which is one of the reasons when the verified trust can fail so often. Right. It's also one of the reasons why signature verification should be so freaking slow, because sometimes they'll go off the network. Um, and the other thing is that we don't trigger the verification for the burn itself. We just hand it off to um, yeah, see, it's actually, it seems that we would have to run run verify trust against itself before executing it, which doesn't make any sense. We should not have to verify ourselves before launching ourselves. That, you know, so it's like we hand it off to win verify trust if they don't want to verify the signatures. And go get it. But we're explicitly at not asking for the, uh, download fresh certificates, that fresh certificates option. Well, I don't remember. I thought we did something where we asked for it, and if that fails, then we do it without getting them so that we can try to verify if they have the certificates locally. Hmm. This is what I thought we did, but I haven't been in that space for a long time. And honestly, it's Win Verify Trust, and I don't know that I did all of the, I didn't do all the work in there anyway. Um, we can keep the bug open and go investigate it further and see if there's something that can be done, but I'm not exactly sure what we do. Like, on the initial launch, we don't we don't control that. Is there a way to ask for CERT updates without actually trying to verify something? Well, you could always just say, you know, verify this and then ignore the error code and then actually verify it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, specifically, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking out loud, is there a way of, of, you know, triggering an update if, you know, they're internet connected and whatnot, but without doing it at the time that, you know, we want to elevate quickly? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like a, in a background. Hey, let's go make sure your certificates are up to date. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I'm not aware of any way of doing that. doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay. Um, we can leave it open. Yeah, I think it's fair to open it. Uh, Someone can go dig into it and try to come up with a better thing than we've done already. The problem is you can't 
force it. I'm pre- I thought we did the whole thing where it's like, if you go look at the wind verify, uh, someone could go look at the wind verify trust code. I think it's fairly it's a bit more complex because it attempts to do what I said. It tries and says, well, go ahead and go to get internet. And if that fails, then don't worry about it. Let's just try to verify the file since we have it. If it succeeds, right. that's great. And if it fails, ignore that and let's just try to verify it local. And if that fails, well, then that'll be the real error code. I think mm-hmm. is what it tries to do now. So I'm fine if we open this. You can put it in 3x and people can go c- try to fight with the wind verify trust to get it to behave better than it does now. This one suggests that we want to run ver- wind verify trust against the XE that we just opened, and that feels a little weird, but whatever. Well, it's a target. I guess that's that's where I was like, is there? Can you just generically request a cert update run? I don't know. By something that might not even have a cert. Yeah, I don't know. Inside. I don't know. Some of the people have mentioned for other VS add-ins is type engo and hit tab, and sure. So we could add a snippet I, or something. Oh, a snippet would work. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think we. Uh, I think you need a language service to do the the in editor things. Yeah, but you might be able to do a snippet. Yeah. And it's a reasonable feature request. So I'm yep. to do that. Add wild card support for MSI package source file. Trying to bundle a chain or MSI are generated as part of our build. MSI have auto version numbers as part of their file names. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. We don't do this. This would be a heat thing. No. <laughs> We're not going to have one MSI package turn into a bunch. That changes everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah. No. Wild cards. Add auto. I can't, I can't. I can't imagine. I can't imagine shipping something that you have built with wild cards. Yeah. Well, yeah. So here is a. Uh, this has already been done. Neil actually did a preprocessor extension for this function. Sorry, preprocessor function for this. Oh, I was gonna say. Hey, wait. We have a preprocessor extension example. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Launch target could fail because. Working folder could be changed. Could ch- working folder could be changed even when launching a full launch target could depend on some local config. Working directory would not always be the current dir on launching a target. Why not add another variable like I think we did, right? The launch target? I don't think so. No. I don't think we get it in Wix, Wix variable, time. the address of a null terminated string. Right. We're going to put an address as the variable. <laughs> anyway. Oh. I think that was supposed to be doc- documentation. I know, but seriously, the ad- you're going to put the address of a null terminated string inside this Wix variable. That would be unlike a lot of other Wix doc, for better or for worse. That's gone. All right. So, sure. We could add a working folder for launch target. Define log should be removed. Yes. Uh, let's put this in four. What? Was removed from log. This has been there since Wix 1.0. Should be removed before this goes. Lots of entities in the thing. Fine. We can. We can put this in four. We're not going to change it. I don't think we're going to be able to change it in 3x. Who knows what it'll cause in 3x. But yeah, we can fix that. Burn does not natively support same version upgrades. That is true. We can put this in 3x. <sighs> We've had many discussions about same version upgrades. Someone could write that. It's not a bug. It's a feature, though. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So, yes. Speed with node yielding. So this is interesting. It's not easy, as they suggest, because we actually do some weird stuff to load the um, Wix toolset as assemblies instead of launching them as separate executables because starting the managed executables can take so long, and so in small builds, it actually is faster to do what we do um, than it is to node yield. 
but in bigger builds you may win with no yielding than you do not. Well, I I don't I've never heard of this, so I have no idea what it's asking. What it's oh, asking. so no yielding is an MS build feature where you can specify that um, my task can yield and it will then basically turn you into a background task and come back to you later, which allows the, that MS build node, because you know MS build will farm out a bunch of nodes, to right. go off and do something else. Now, the reason they don't do this automatically in MS build is because the working directory will change, because they'll go launch something else. And who knows what other things in memory. So if all your task does is take parameters and then launch an executable, it doesn't matter because that executable gets its own working directory and it's off and running. Yeah. In our case, we load the things in memory, and so we're actually operating inside MS Build, which is why you can actually see us crashing MS Build nodes if we go up that, if we crash. So anyway, this is not as easy as someone would think. You can actually read about it. Yeah, they have a link to it. Better. So anyway, the MS Build guys did not turn this on for everything by default, which was a good decision because it would have broken tasks like us. So for us, it would be um, instead of loading the exes and such like we do straight into the tasks, we would have to um, launch them as standalone executables. And we don't do that today because launching that executable actually takes a block of time. But it is an option with run tools out of proc or whatever the... That's true. With run tools out of proc, you can get it to do that. Anyway, the, I don't know. I've been debating the right way to handle our tasks going forward anyway, and so I saw. I remember this bug from there. That's why all this context is loaded for me, because I was doing all the MS build stuff recently. Right. And I don't really know the best thing to do here. I don't... It's interesting. I mean, light is... I/O intensive and with compression can be CPU intensive as well. So it's one of those. Would you really want light to? Would you really want to start up another another target? Well, you can't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just is this really a, a thing? <laughs> multi proc for, builds for your compression packs. will be fine. Your disk I/O is always going to be the problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I suppose if you have a bunch of tasks that are not CPU intensive or IO intensive, then yeah, okay, I guess. Anyway, I don't know what we do for ours is not as simple as this bug would make it sound, I guess. Agree, agree. And I don't really know whether we should do the work to get ourselves out of proc and then. It, I tell you, tell you, if we were to move ourselves out of proc, we should do this. If we're not out of proc, we can't do this. So it's actually, that's actually pretty simple. Um, well, but if it, oh, are you suggesting like in 4.0 that we wouldn't have the switch that we do now? Uh, it, it's purely a, is loading in proc still a good thing for us? Okay. I, I don't know. The answer could be yes, of course, because nothing has changed. Um. If that changes, we should do this, I guess, is what it comes down to. If you run out of proc, you'll want to set this. So does this mean this is something we should take only in 4x? Probably, because we're not going to change it in 3x. OK, that's a, one way to look at it. And if I remember correctly, yeah, you set that, but we could set that. So we could do this if Wix tool out of proc is set. Oh, so you could do it without, you could do everything in the targets. Yeah. Oh, that's exec. I take that back, maybe not. Oh. We I don't actually know how you do this programmatically. I don't remember how this gets passed. Like, this is what the exec passes it. We'd have to probably add something to our Wix tasks to take that and then do the magic and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. And however you do yielding inside MS Build. Anyway, it's possible. It's possible. I'm, I'm <sighs> the whole outer proc thing. Um, I'd say we keep it and we add all those notes to it and call it good. So, 
we could do this for, you know, let's keep it and say we can do this for when we're run out of proc. And if we ever go to, we're always running out of proc, well, then we should do this then, too. Cool? Okay. That works. Uh, a long way around for that bug. .NET 4 client re fails on XP64. Uh, this is the problem we have with uh, .NET 4.0 on oh, and the WIC. XP. Yeah, the it, it's not it's not a bug per se. It's a um, well, it's a bug. What you get, but the problem is the prereq BA can only handle one package. One package. That's right. Yeah. So the feature here is to have prereq BA be able to do multiple packages, which would be a cool feature in of itself. Uh, yes, it would. So let's let's. No, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, this bug is going to go away quickly. Well, quickly. <laughs> However, quickly XP sixty four goes away. But oh, uh, the problem there is server two thousand three. Do they not have SP, not in SP2? Uh, sorry, no, the support for Server 2003 yeah. extends until 2015. Right, and you're saying that Server 2003 SP2 did not have this fix in it. Oh, it was added in the service packs. .NET doesn't include it, those, oh geez. Pretty sure it's still not something you have to chain in. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Although, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. I, sure. <laughs> okay. So this is a hard bug to fix. It should be fixed. That'd be great. Right? Yeah. Uh, I might I might close this and open a new but uh, open a, a feature request. I think that's fine too. If you want to sum it up and link back to this bug as the history, yeah, I'm fine with that too. Uh, yeah, Jacob brings a point. You could create a bundle that installs a .NET framework as a. Eh. <laughs> uh, I kind of like that idea. Especially if you had the bundle that doesn't go into the ARP feature. Yeah, because then you just have a well, bundle that's yeah. a bunch of Xs that doesn't do anything. Yeah, that that you would need that, unfortunately. Oh, it's all nasty. At that point, you could just have an Xe <laughs> that launches these two things. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. Revive setup build so that we can do this. No, it's, it's not even. It's almost a batch file, but. I know. Anyway. Blah. All right. So yeah. This is the whole remote payload thing. It's not possible a remote payload for a payload element. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they were trying to do there, but that's true. This this comes back to the remote payload needs to be narrowed down to only being XE package. Did we get that in three eight? I don't. I don't remember. Because that's really what it should be. Is that remote payload so. should? You think so? I think. So. Well, I want to say that I have this memory that we took it in three eight. Okay. And it's not on the open list anymore, so we must have fixed it, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. We are that organized. Um, so yeah, that would be the fix. Um, Just to make it clear that okay. remote payload is only good for XE package. Uh, yeah, I'll do my normal check to see if we've already done this thing. Okay. Add burn variable to cache package. We're going to go for another couple here, see how we can get these last couple. A full path. We need pointing to the cache. Yeah, I think this is a reasonable feature. 3x. Yeah? Basically, it'd be a, a, very, a variable similar to the path that we set up for the log folder. We would set it up for the cache path. Because you do sometimes on the command line have to set those for XEs, where XE needs the full path to some stupid thing or something. It's really yeah, bad. but 
the, the, well, the problem is, you know, you could do the cache folder, and what's that? Package cache? How do you get the, the path to a particular payload? Oh, to a payload. Or, or well, or even package. Well, a package we can do, because we, we already have a way that we do, like, you know, log file dot package ID dot something or something. So we, we already do that for a log file. So we could do the same thing for cache path to the package. Um, well, no, we, we could do no. That's fine because then the payloads are relative to the package. So if it's if it's the folder of the package, it's fine because then you can manifest the rest of it. No, the Jacob, the package cache is actually per package, so you have to do um, per package. So package cache, whack foo, whack whatever won't do it. You'd have to get the per package. So anyway, it could be done. Totally could be done. I think it's reasonable. It's it to me. It's the same as the log folder thing. I forgot that we do create all those variables. Yes, we do. It's annoying in the log file, but yes, useful. it is. But it's useful. Um, okay, well, I'm fine with that in three X. One more. Whoa! Look at that formatting. That's awesome. Uh, the bootstrappers, <laughs> whack, funky, are not determined after reboot. Setting variables like install folder are not determined. Really? This is an old bug. This might be fixed, but it might not. Yeah, we should look at that. Should investigate that. Well, is this is this persisted, or is the idea Let's, that we should auto persist? Oh, you know, that's a good point. If they're not persisted, they won't be persisted. Let's assume they're not persisted and get the things back. Although they do provide sources. Don't they? <sighs> oh, okay. I'm gonna open the ah it's all covering up everything you can see. Um MSI property is not marked. Uh where's the variable? Where's the variable? I lied. Install folder. Where is install folder defined? Oh, it's not. Therefore, how does this? Oh, it gets set from the Bootstrap application. Oh, if you use the options page. Yes. Okay. I have to go look. Anyway, yeah, we should go look. Or, I don't know, go look one more time. Let me go look one more. Where is that? Source extensions. BA. Seems weird though to not set it by default because then the BA won't show a default directory. We don't we don't default it. They have to default it. Yeah, sorry, that's what I'm saying. If you don't put the variable element in your bundle, then you yeah. have a point default. Yeah. Okay, then then all right, yeah, fine. This is this is they didn't mark it persisted. It, it, it's not anywhere. Yeah. It's not getting persisted to the bundle at all. That's this bug. Cool. That bug can go away. Pilot error. Unless they come back and show us more data that says, No, 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 I did it right and we misread something. Then we'll go back and do that again. Wix targets should expose targets to get more output data. More output data? Um, oh, this is this is fixed in four. Okay. Well, I don't know. Target PDP, intermediate output path, output name target. Yeah, remember this is the only path that you can get is the is the final output path. Yeah, no, this is this is this is common targets now. So it's the same as common targets, which means all those are set by common targets, which you would then get them the way that you would get them in common targets. So I would say that this is fixed in four, and I would argue I don't really want to deal with this in three X. I am completely there. All right, awesome. That bug is resolved, fixed in four. Three seven two eight. So if we hit refresh and we go back and look, three seven two eight. So one two three four five six seven. So we're down to five seventy. Hmm. What was that? Forty bugs in one pass. 
Not bad. Not bad. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to call that a day. Um, I hope the rest of you have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, as it case may be. Um, I suppose I should get to work now um, and go do something else. Um, so you guys have a good time, and we'll talk soon. Cheers. Bye.